Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel H&E Life and today I have some exciting news to share with everyone that I recently found out that I have passed my AP PATH boards and whew, what a sigh of relief because I have been really concerned about passing this test and I really don't want to study and take it again if I didn't pass it and also all the money I would have to spend if I didn't pass it this first time. But yes, I passed my board on my first try and I'm so excited. I took my boards back in May and I'm just finding out. So yeah, that was quite a long wait, but now I'm excited to be able to introduce myself from, the, from now on as Dr. Cindy Wong, a board certified pathologist. So that said, today I would like to talk about the pathology boards. Pathology boards are broken into two components, the AP boards and the CP boards. If you are an APCP resident, then you are able to take AP or CP or both. And if you're only AP or CP only resident, then you have to take your irrespective AP or CP boards. I guess today's video, I would like to talk about um, how to register for boards because it's actually quite confusing. All right, so let's get started. So most of the information I want to share today, you could probably find on the ABP PATH website, um, which is where you will also need to register for boards. I will link the website uh, down below for everyone to look at if you are curious or if you're a current la uh, senior finishing up your last year of pathology, you're probably starting to be a little nervous about the boards because I definitely was very nervous when I started off my fourth year and I was like, oh boy, I now have to learn everything and be ready to take a very long multiple choice test and slide test to basically say that I am qualified to be a pathologist and I have enough knowledge uh, that I've accumulated over the years to be able to practice pathology. The ABP PATH um, has boards for both uh, general pathology, the APCP boards. They also have subspecialized boards for uh, after fellowship, like if you're doing blood bank or hematology or PEDS or neuro or most of the CP fellowships. So the primary boards, which are the AP or C and CP boards are done in the spring and the subspecialty boards are usually done in the fall. When I say spring and fall, I mean spring and fall of the coming year. So what I mean by that is if right now say is July 2021 and you are current fourth year finishing up your residency, you will be sitting and taking your AP CP boards come uh, spring of 2022. If you are someone who is just starting your fellowship that is board certified, you will be sitting to take the boards for it in fall of 2022. So a little bit of the timeline. You need to start applying for boards this year. So if you are a fourth year and you need to take boards this spring, then you need to start applying fall of this year for boards. And there's actually quite a lot to go into it. You apply on the ABP PATH website. The website opens September and it closes, um, I think in January you need to register for the boards within this time. If not, you will be paying a late fee, which is tremendous. So since we're talking about fees for the boards, let's start with the overwhelming cost. The cost for registration and eligibility to take the boards is $2,600 if you're APCP and you want to take both boards. If you're AP only or CP only and you only want to take one board, I thought it would be half that price, but no. If you are only taking one board, it is actually $2,100. So yeah, get ready to spend quite some money registering for this boards. And this is why I'm so relieved I don't have to take this test again because, well, that, that was a lot of money and that's a lot of money to lose if you don't pass the first time. And remember how I says, make sure to apply before the deadline, because after the deadline in January, I think there is a substantial fee. The late fee is half the price of the registration fee. So for example, if you apply for APCP boards late, that is a 1300 additional fee on top of that. So you end up paying 
well, close to $4,000 if you applied late. So yeah, don't apply late. Make sure you apply on time so you don't pay for the fees. Some caveats about taking the boards after you register is that even if you register, you need to make sure that you have completed your autopsy requirements before they will prove you to sit and schedule for your boards. So what I mean is in my one of my previous videos, when I talked about autopsies, um, this past year, the requirement was 30 autopsies. You will need to complete 30 autopsies in full from beginning to end, and you need to document it on the ACGME website and you need to print that log and upload it with your registration for taking your boards and the ABP will go through your log and deem if you have fully met the 30 that they need or if for God forbid they decide that some of your autopsies don't count then uh, I hope you have completed more than the requirement because you always want just that little bit of cushion in case they decide to throw away one or two of your autopsies. And the other thing is if you're taking APCP combined boards, you don't have to take both in one year because while I think most people do take both tests at one go because you have the most time to study for it in your fourth year of pathology, but some people might think that is overwhelming because these has have so much material that you need to know. You can't take your AP boards one year and the CP boards the following year, but you will not be certified for either until you pass both. So for example, if you took AP CP boards and you only pass the AP portion, and not the CP portion, you're not AP certified pathologist. You are not certified at all. You have to keep going and take the CP boards until you pass to be APCP certified pathologist. So yeah, that is something to consider, isn't it? If you end up being APCP through residency and then you hated CP a lot and you think that, well, I'm never going to get a job that requires CP and I really don't want to study all that CP has to know. Has to know. So it might be better if overall you just sit and take the AP boards and then only be AP board certified and then you won't have at the risk of having to fail the CP boards and then not get board certified at all and then have to re-register to take the CP boards again in the future. Just, just something to consider because, you know, it is, these tests are not easy. <laughs> Other things that you need to do for taking your boards is you need to make sure you have a permanent license in a state. And usually this is not a problem because wherever you do fellowship, uh, you'll be end up having to apply for the permanent uh, medical license in that state where you're doing the fellowship anyways. And if you're going straight to work, your work's going to require a permanent uh, medical license in that state that you'll be working in. So this kind of just lumps in with it but if you do not have your permanent license by the time that the board scores are released the following year after you've taken it they will not let you know what you get they will just let you know like hey scores are available but since you don't have a permanent license we're not going to tell you if you passed or failed so that's one more thing you have to do during the whole application process so, and then later in the early spring when all of your registration material has been approved they'll let you know that you are now board eligible and you will be given um, a separate communications probably via email letting you know uh, now you can sign up for testing times historically uh, the APCP boards are are done in Tampa, Florida because of COVID this year that I, when I took it and the previous year, the boards were in um, general testing centers uh, within each state. So for me, I got lucky since I was in Chicago, there was several testing centers I could have chosen from and I, I got to go take my test and I got to pick the date that worked best for me. And I was able to take my test in a testing center that was like 10 miles from where I lived. So that was very convenient and saved me a lot of money to have to fly to Florida and then get hotels in Florida. And then so, yeah. Um, I liked it. It was more convenient. That said, I have had heard rumors that 
they are thinking of keeping CP boards um, in standardized testing centers going forward, but they're really pushing to have the AP board still be done in Florida. And I don't know why, but yeah, so that is a rumor and I don't know how true it would be. And I don't know what will happen for the 2022 um, spring primary APCP exams. I guess we'll find out when they finally release information. So I sort of went through a timeline. I kind of told you everything that you need to be able to register and be board eligible. Like I said, um, I really didn't know about this whole process when I was in fourth year. And um, I basically didn't sign up to register till like beginning of January, which was like right around the deadline. And I was like, oh, thank God that like, I was like, oh, let me check the website. Because for some reason, I thought like either the AB path people or someone in my department will email all the fourth years be like hey by the way it's time to register to take the boards and while well, i got no such email so yeah well i hope this will motivate you to check the app path website and uh know when it's ready and submit your forms early uh because that way you don't have to be as stressed about as i was about missing that deadline and having to pay that extra late fee well so that's it for now i hope you enjoyed it please hit the like and the subscribe button to support me and my channel. And I will see everyone next time. Bye.